And that's Runaway. One. Like I said in the intro, there's a lot to be recommended uh, for this game. I like the story. I think it's a good story. It's got some depth. It's got some twists and turns. I'm not saying it's the greatest video game story ever told, but it's certainly better than several adventure game stories. It's good. It's solid. I also, I like the art style. I mean, it's simplistic. I mean, it's mostly 2D, but with some 3D elements. It's what I wish adventure games had evolved into rather than trying to make the jump to full 3D. Uh, it looks good. It works. Uh, the interface is fairly easy. I mean, as you saw, pixel hunting is not that difficult, even though you still have to do it, which is, I feel, a problem. Um, it's a simple interface. It's easy to play. It's easy to understand. The voice acting... Eh. I don't feel like at any point the voice actors drew attention away from the quality of the game by being bad. Uh, they weren't Oscar performances, but they were decent. They were solid. I've got no problems with them. Again, it just comes down to the puzzles. Oh my god, some of those puzzles were just... Okay, uh, the th there's three puzzles that really that stick with me the most. That Even going back in to play this again, I knew I was going to have to deal with. Um... The first puzzle is uh, filling up the Sharpie with alcohol. Sorry, I just my brain shut off there for a minute. Filling up the Sharpie with alcohol to refresh it. You could put me in a room with a hundred objects, and I would never think of doing that. I just, and that's maybe it's just me because I did talk to a friend of mine, Matt, and he said, "Oh yeah, that's how markers work." Okay, well then it's just me, maybe who wouldn't think, hey, I'll take this syringe and inject a marker with it. How are you going to inject the marker with alcohol? I don't know. I got a syringe. It injects. Where in the marker does it inject? Doesn't matter. It's a syringe. It injects. I never would have thought of that. Dipping the battery in liquid nitrogen. That would break the battery, wouldn't it? It makes it brittle. It would break. But no. And that's still supposing the urban myth I suppose that a cold battery is a more effective battery. I haven't Googled it, but you know what? Let's do it now. Right now, I'm going to Google it. I'm pulling up the Googles. Is a cold battery more effective? Question mark. Batteries don't work equally well in cold and hot weather. Let's see. Apparently, putting just a quick at a quick glance, it looks like the colder colder batteries are slightly more effective. They discharge their energy less quickly, thus lasting longer. So, storing batteries in your fridge will make them last longer. That, for me, doesn't translate to take a dead battery, freeze it, and it'll come back to life. But okay. And I still question liquid nitrogen as the medium, because then you just, you, you take it out, you touch it, and it crumbles. Also, you burn your fingers. But no, he picks it up and puts it in the thing, and it's fine. Both of these puzzles require you to be MacGyver without any in-game hints. There is no hint at any point that says, huh, if only I had a way to get this battery cold. Or, you know, a pamphlet somewhere that you see that mentions batteries operating better at colder temperatures. Because that's what adventure games typically do. They offer hints and clues how to solve any puzzles that don't immediately make sense. This game doesn't do it. This game expects you to be MacGyver. But we aren't. I'm just this guy who watches bad movies and plays video games. I am not MacGyver. The final puzzle that always sticks in mind is making bullets out of lipstick. Has there ever... I just... 
how on earth am I supposed to even dream of doing that? Also, the fact that this game repeatedly, repeatedly makes you do things you've already done later on to get different results. Going back into that doctor's bag three times because I'd hit a dead end. It's not like I knew what I was looking for. I can't get into the safe. That's it. I don't know what to do. The game is actually expecting you because it's the only way you can. When you hit a dead end in this game, you are supposed to go everywhere you've gone before, click on everything you've clicked on before, and hope something new shakes loose. That is monstrous. That is horrible game design. When I first go into the doctor's bag, or when I first go into Gina's purse, it should give me all the items I'm going to use. That's what it should do. Hey, this looks interesting. Hey, this Because throughout the game, he'll pick up anything that looks interesting. He picks up items without knowing the cause, or without knowing the reason, not knowing what he's going to do with them. He does it all the time throughout the game. But going into those bags, and there were other circumstances too, but going into those bags, he will only pull out the item that would solve the puzzle you're currently stuck at. Whereas other items, he'll pick up he'll pick up items that'll solve a puzzle in the next chapter. No problem. Having items that you can't use to solve anything is a minor annoyance of mine. I'd be willing to let that go. If that was the only sin I felt this game committed, I'd let it go. I'd be fine with it. Um, it, it actually it adds to the difficulty of a game if there are items that you can't use, and that's fine. I don't mind the increased difficulty. But when you add that problem in to all the other problems, it's just irritating. Never once in the entire game do you use your wallet, your car keys, or the order form for the book. So why are you carrying them around the entire game? Anyway. So Runaway is going on the list of games I never have to play again. For those of you keeping track at home, that is Gabriel Knight 3, Dragon Quest 1, and run away. I suffer so you don't have to. So there are two more games in the Runaway series and I'm gonna play them. Uh, I've only gotten past the first chapter in the second game. So from there on you and I will be learning together and it will be quite a fun experience. But I am not jumping into Runaway 2 next. I need a break. I need a breather. I'm going to play something fun. I think I'm going back to play the second Freedom Force game. That's my plan at the moment. So uh, I also have found a, a young lady who's willing to do an LP with me of Leather Goddesses of Phobos. So that may come out before uh, the Freedom Force game does. Leather Goddesses of Phobos being a text-only game. That's why I really, really needed a, a young lady to be with me on that so we could do the male and female voices, and there's just going to be a lot of reading. Uh, I'll show you the text, but uh, it's going to be a lot of talking. So I wanted a backup person. So, I think we're done. That was Runaway. Next up, Freedom Force, but we will get to Runaway 2. And we will get to Runaway 3. Because this this series can't be allowed to get away with what it's done. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.